So now let me introduce uh, some more terms to you. Galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell in which a spontaneous chemical reaction is used to generate an electric current. So on a problem, which you may have on your problem set, and I've already looked at this, it'll say something about for a galvanic cell. Well, that wasn't just kind of random information they're throwing out. They're telling you that the reaction is going to be spontaneous in that cell. So that will often tell you what reaction had to be happening at the anode and what reaction had to be happening at the cathode. Uh, because you need to have it be spontaneous, you need a value for delta E naught then that's positive. So the information that it's a galvanic cell tells you a lot about the problem. In contrast, we have electrolytic cell. And in this case, uh, we can put in energy uh, to provide, uh, to be able to drive a non-spontaneous reaction. So you can generate uh, a current to then force a non-spontaneous reaction to go. So these are two different kinds of, of, of cells. So again, whether something's spontaneous or not comes back to our friend delta G. So if a cell is operating uh, spontaneously, that means you're going to have a delta E naught of the cell that's positive, which means that the delta G of the cell will be negative. And we can calculate these delta E naughts of the cell from the standard reduction potentials, which some nice person measured for us against the standard hydrogen, hyd standard hydrogen uh, electrode. And so we can look up those values, and then we can calculate delta E, and we uh, delta E naught of the cell. We'll know something about whether it will be a spontaneous reaction or not. So now let's think about the uh, size and the sign of standard reduction potentials and what they tell us about a particular reaction. So the meaning of the standard reduction potential that you can look up in your book. So first, let's think about what happens or what would be true if we had a large positive delta E naught. And that's going to mean that the element is easy to reduce. So let's look at an example. At the top of your table, you're going to see this particular reduction with this particular reduction potential. So we have F2 gas plus two electrons going to 2F minus. And the standard reduction potential for this is measured at plus 2.87 volts. So as written, that's uh, the value, the standard reduction potential. That's a large positive number. So that's going to mean that it's easy to add electrons to F2. Uh, the delta G naught would be favorable for that. So, um, so then you can tell me, does that make F2 a good oxidizing agent or not? And why? OK, let's do 10 seconds. Good. Yes, it is easy to reduce. So it's easy to add electrons, which makes it a good oxidizing agent. So let's go back to the slides. So a good oxidizing agent is something uh, that oxidizes other elements and gets reduced itself. So it goes around oxidizing things. It's an agent of oxidation. So something that's easy to reduce is going to be a good oxidizing agent. And something that's easy to reduce is going to have a large positive uh, standard reduction potential. So uh, one way to sort of remember this is for a particular couple, if something has a large positive delta E naught, the oxidized species, so the oxidized species here is the F2. It's of these two things, it's the one that's oxidized. Uh, so the oxidizing species, the oxidized species is very oxidized.